Hello everyone, Ice Cool Tech here. Today we're going to be taking a look at how iOS 13.5 Developer Beta 4 has been on the iPhone SE first generation. Now before we get into the video, if you do happen to be new to the channel, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button with notifications turned on to stay up to date with all the latest news, announcements, and of course updates from Apple, as well as reviews, tutorials, and more from Ice Cool Tech. Every subscriber I get truly does mean a lot, it's very appreciated. Timestamps are also in the description if you'd like to use them. Make sure to watch until the end for an update in regards of June 22nd's WWDC 20 event. And anyways, let's get straight into the video. Now iOS 13.5 was iOS 13.4.5. Beta 1 released a little over a month ago, bringing much needed bug fixes as well as security patches and general improvements. Some of these fixes included a string of text that could crash any iPhone, and a mail vulnerability where a user could gain remote control over the target user's inbox. Beta 2 released about two weeks after the first beta, bringing more fixes and improvements, and just a couple of weeks ago, Beta 3 released renaming 13.4.5 to 13.5, and brought the first iteration of Apple and Google's COVID-19 Exposure Notification API. Let me know in the comments down below if you'll be using the COVID-19 Exposure Notification feature iOS 13.5 Beta 4 brings more fixes and improvements, and of course, as well as an updated COVID-19 exposure logging menu in settings. Performance on the iPhone SE with iOS 13.5 Beta 4 has been great. All throughout the betas, I've had really nothing but a positive experience with performance. iOS 13.5 Beta 4 is no exception. Apps open fast, web pages load up quickly, RAM management has been fine, watching videos and playing games perform just fine as well. It's the same story with animations. System animations are as smooth as previous betas. Now this is expected as beta 4 was a smaller update with only minor fixes and some improvements. We're running iOS 13.5 developer beta 4, animations such as opening up the control and notification centers, closing out of apps and the multitasking screen, scrolling through web pages and apps, etc. all perform very smoothly. Battery life has been okay for the most part in this beta. Now I should take a second to mention that my iPhone SE is running off of a maximum battery capacity of 92%, has had a restart, and is not being performance throttled as I've manually disabled this in the battery health settings. This means that my iPhone is not being performance throttled to maintain battery life and prevent restarts. Now with screen on time, I'm getting through the whole day with light to medium use. With medium use, I've noticed that I'll have to charge the phone once or twice throughout the day. If you are a medium user, I'd recommend carrying a spare charger with you just in case. If you're a heavy user, I'd of course recommend using a battery case and keeping a spare charger with you as you'll likely have to charge the phone multiple times throughout the day. As for standby time, I've been seeing a drain of around 4-8% overnight. While this isn't bad at all, it's not the greatest I've seen in iOS 13. Should you update? Well, if you're on an older version of iOS 13 and you're okay with installing beta firmwares or plan to install the iOS 14 beta on June 22nd anyway, then I'd say there's no reason not to. If you're on an older version of iOS 13 and would rather avoid betas, then I'd say wait about a week after the full release to update. Now I say a week so it gives you time to see if any major bugs are reported. Now if you're on iOS 12 or older, I'd strongly suggest staying there as it is much more stable. Overall, iOS 13.5 Developer Beta 4 has been great on my iPhone SE. I've had no major issues while running this beta on my iPhone SE. Everything works perfectly fine, and I'd even say that this iPhone is capable enough to run iOS 14. Now of course, nothing is confirmed until June 22nd, WWDC 20. Now speaking of WWDC, I'd like to give an update on what I'll be doing. I won't be streaming WWDC this year, not because I don't want to however. I will be providing a developer beta profile for iOS 14 and watchOS 7, so you'll have access to it immediately. I'll send it out to you all through a community post on June 22nd after the event, and you'll be able to download it with the link in the descriptions of all following videos. Now I would like to thank Beta Profiles for providing these betas to those of you who don't have access to paid developer accounts. I'll link his Twitter and website in the description as well as the pinned comment down below. Now, as always, if you do have any questions, make sure to leave a comment down below. Alright everyone, that's all I have for this video. If you did enjoy the video or find it helpful in any way, show me by leaving a like. And if you are new to the channel, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button. Every subscriber really does mean a lot and it's very appreciated. Don't forget to check out the iSchool Tech official Discord link in the description down below as always. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.